Okay, I just wanted to take a few minutes to show you how I created this product here with Extruded Product Builder. So here you can see that we have a completed section view of what this product is going to be or what it is. And uh, here you can see the model, the, the finished product that we came up with. And so to show you this, I'm just going to jump over here into a fresh drawing. And you can see it's pretty much the same thing, but all of these are on layer zero. There's no uh, smart layers that have been assigned to this at all. Um, so you can see that we're starting from scratch. So to do that, I'm just going to cl close out Extruder Product Builder and start another session of it. And I'm going to call this Reception Wall 2. Hit OK. And next, I'm going to select the construction path. And then finally, we're going to add some parts. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to show you some things that I did to make this a little bit easier for when we um, have to identify parts within this product. As you can see here, we have kind of a toe kick base uh, unit down here um, with some plates on it, as well as some mid, mid plates and some uh, top plate. And I wanted to be able to tell the difference between those at a glance. Uh, sure, when we highlight it uh, in the menu here, you'll see that we actually highlight the parts. But from a name basis, I wanted to be able to see what they are. So to, let's take a look at what I did. So if we come over here to our Smart Layer Manager, I had it open on, on another window. You can see I added a few things. So here we have uh, a plate toe kick um, bottom. So that's going to be this part here. That's what I'm going to sign there. And then this one is the toe kick top um, plate. It's right here. And we also have the mids. So you can see that's going to allow me just at a glance to see where those parts are and what they are. Um, and then we finally have, we didn't have to do anything for the uh, the other plates. I'm just going to use my plate top uh, three quarters of an inch layer. So let's move this back out of the way. And we will go ahead and um, start adding some parts. So to do that, I'm just going to window the whole thing. And we have the selection uh, properties box come up. And now we're going to see what it's got highlighted. So it looks like it has our stud highlighted at the top one. Um, I could have had a different name for this one as well, so I could tell it apart a little easier. But I chose not to. And I'll show you why uh, here in a minute. But um, I'm going to go and go ahead and choose that for my stud. And the next one is the middle one there. And so again, I'll choose this one right here. And then finally, oh, it looks like it's choosing the exterior pieces now. So I'm going to go ahead and just apply all the all the materials as they have been selected. Okay, so now my product is drawn. Um, we're going to go ahead and turn off these skins because I don't need to work with these right now. I'm just mainly concerned about the interior parts of this. So we'll just turn off and hide all of these exterior skins. So there we go. There we have it. And so we can take a look to see what we ended up with just straight out of the box uh, without making any other customization. So let's zoom in here and we can see some of the things that we have set up in here. So actually, I'm going to turn off my countertop too so I can see what's going on. So here we have um, a joint. Um, this joint is not being supported by any studs, so we're going to have to fix that. Uh, and here we have kind of an odd uh, corner navigation here with these studs here, and we're going to have to take a look at those as well, fix that up. And then the other thing that we need to look at is uh, we have a problem here to where, well, I, I think it's a problem, where this, this top, these plates are too long. That's probably not how we want to construct that. Probably want to break those to be a little bit smaller. So there's several ways that we can do that uh, within the software. We can simply use these tools down here to insert, move, or delete joints. So if we wanted to seam these two together, join them for whatever reason, we can use these tools down here to delete that. And I would select each part and then the, delete, the joint would be deleted. But that's definitely not what I want to do with those parts. And I don't really want to have to click each one either. Um, and so let me show you. I purposefully left this this way. But if, if you know that, that you want to make these smaller to, uh, in the beginning, you can make those changes uh, before you start drawing the product. But 
what we can do is just go through our plates here. And so there's a property in here that allows you to set the linear part length. And so this is the max distance length that we're going to allow this particular part to, um, to be drawn at. And so this happens to be 96 inches, and that is way too long. So we're going to set that to something like 47, and we'll hit OK. And so we just need to make the changes to these here, each of these plates. And notice as I'm clicking through these parts here, you'll see that the part is actually highlighting. If I zoom in here a little bit more, you'll really get a, you'll really get to see how the, when I click through these, the parts that it's really highlighting. So, yeah, it'd be it's nice to have these names um, so that you can clearly identify what they are. But if you set your layer coloring right, uh, the highlight works really well. So we're going to go back and set the rest of these to 47. Okay, and so now let's take a look at and see what we ended up with. And so we have these parts here that are a little bit more manageable. Maybe you have to fit them in an elevator or uh, fit them on the truck a little easier, stack them, whatever. It's a whole lot easier. Plus, we ended up with a lot better corner piece here, uh, manageable corner piece that we can put, put in place. But we still have to fix this problem here because we have these plates that are just kind of flapping in the wind. There's nothing to secure those. So let's see how we can fix that. So let's choose the stud. So you can see here this design, we have three different studs that are in use. So I'm going to start with the top one here. Here, And what I want to do is I want to fix this problem that we see right here. So to do that, I'm just going to go to my properties and choose this option here, a joint option. And so we have a few different options, a single stud at the joint, a double stud, or even cut the entity back to the last stud that it found in the run. Well, that's not what I want to do either. So, I'm, But what I do want to do is choose this double stud at joint option. And so now we're not finished. We can't hit OK because we actually have to figure out what we want to associate the double stud property. So if I move this joint around, it needs to know where to follow with these instructions. And so this is where the names come in handy as well. But you'll also notice that we actually highlight them as we select. So I know in this case that I want it to be my plate top inch, uh, top three quarters of an inch. So when I highlight that, you'll actually see that top plate highlight right there in the drawing. Uh, so that's the one that I want it to be using for the instructions as to where to put those double studs. And now I can hit OK, and you'll notice that we ended up with double studs there at the joint. And that's exactly what we wanted. Um, but what you might be questioning is why this guy right here, this stud, still hung around. And if you noticed, if we go back into our properties, we ha gave instructions uh, as to where to place those. And so this happens to be 16 inches on center. And so what it's doing is actually listening to those instructions and realizing that I, I need to put my, my stud at 16 on center. Um, but we also gave it additional instructions to put a double stud at the joint. And so in this particular case, this is what we ended up with. And so um, once we once we get a little bit further along in this process, I can show you how to uh, delete that or get rid of that as well. So let's just go ahead and finish what we're working on right now, and that is assigning these um, or fixing these uh, the, the, this joint problem that we have here and placing a, a double stud at the joint. And so let's focus on the mid ones, mid studs, and you can see they highlight nicely. Go into the properties, and again we're going to choose a joint option of double stud at the joint. And this time we're going to select, um, it's a mid, looks like the bottom. And so that's the appropriate one that we want to have selected, and we will hit OK. And it's going to do the same thing, and there's the third one there, but we'll fix that in a minute. And then finally this bottom piece, let's go back into here and choose a, the same property. And this time we want this kind of this darker red color one, so that one it looks like it's going to be the toe kick top plate is what we want and then we can hit OK. All right so now as we can see we we were focused in on this one area of this of this wall but what you can actually get a picture of is I didn't have to make that change at every single joint it followed the instructions just as the property said to do wherever it found a joint and at this in this example of this wall it we set those uh, seams or those joints to come every 47 inches. And so that's exactly what it did across the entire product. So now let's get rid of these uh, unnecessary ones 
Um, we, we, we have definitely have enough support here with these two double studs at this joint, so we just don't need those at all. So let's go ahead and delete those. So we can just simply delete it and notice that the data goes away. away. And we can keep, keep going with this process. Um, we don't have to repeat the command. Um, I just had to reposition my drawing here, so I'm going to activate it again. All right, so it's responding just as we would expect. And we will delete those. And finally, we have to maneuver over to this side, and I think there's also an extra one here. All right, in this in this case, I think I'm going to leave it the way that this is uh, for now, um, because one of the things I want to show you is what it did here. So because we had these set at 47 inches, um, it ended up creating this little, looks like maybe five inch piece here that we probably don't want to have there. Um, and we have enough room on our material so that we can actually go a little bit longer than 47. So what I'm going to do is just delete that joint. And that's going to get rid of my double stud property. Notice that it got rid of it because it was assigned or attached to this top plate right here. So the instructions say, well, there's no joint there anymore, so I don't need to put a double stud at that location. Um, so what we want to do is we want to continue that down through this. So we're going to choose this one, delete it. And then we'll choose this next one. And you'll notice that these double studs here also disappear. And then finally down here at the bottom, we'll do the same thing. And this one's a little bit tricky because I have to navigate up a little bit because that you can see that kind of is a little bit of an overhang. So go up a little bit and then we'll delete that joint down there. All right, so now we have no more um, double studs on the bottom piece and we have just one more joint to delete. All right, there we go. Things are looking a little better now, except for that one. I have to delete this one as well. All right, that's a lot better. So now we have a run where we don't have a little six inch or five inch piece there hanging off. Um, so uh, let's take a look at this corner here for a minute. So you might think, well, let's go ahead and delete this one too because it's in the way, but we're actually going to use it because I don't like the way that this corner is, is uh, has sorted out how the, the automated instructions for placing these, how, how they ended up. And so what I want to do is take care of that. And so I don't have to redraw anything or anything like that. I'm going to just use these tools for vertical entity placement. I'm going to move it. Select my vertical entity, which is my stud. And let's say I want to move it back six inches. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing with the rest of these, oh, there's these two other ones. We'll move back six. And six inches. And so the next thing that we want to do is we want to shore up this other side a little bit and maybe reduce this gap so that there's a little bit more support in that corner. So this time we're going to uh, move it closer to it. So let's go ahead and move that. And I'll do six inches as well. Not exact, but you get the idea. If you had an exact point you had to move that to, you could always draw a line or something or uh, get a measurement so that you could move it exactly where it needed to be. But in this example, I don't really need to do that. Um, so I'm just going to continue on down here. Six inches. And six inches. So notice again, all the dados for those studs moved over. Um, I've created a stronger corner here by just uh, moving those parts into place. Um, and so I think that's about it. Let me make sure that I've covered everything in here. And it's exactly the way that we need it to be. And I think that you'll find that it is. So I hope this video was uh, helpful for you. I hope it uh, helped you to understand the, the so few tips on how you can create walls like this and move parts uh, together and even reduce joints to optimize your material and you know get rid of excess overhang on parts or additional pieces that the, the 
the instructions uh, told it to, to make. So anyways, we can turn these, uh, these skins back on and countertops and we can take a look at what our final result is. That's it. And there you have it. There is our, our wall. So again, I hope this helps you. And uh, until next time, I'll talk to you later. Have a good one.